The compass exam has many basic math questions. Here I have one example of a basic math question that you could encounter on the compass exam. 31 minus 27 plus 12 minus 23 minus negative 25 plus negative 6. Now, it can look kind of daunting because there are a lot of numbers here to add and subtract. But just take it one set at a time and work from left to right. So we'll start with 31 minus 27. And that's just 4. Now I'm going to copy the rest of this problem. Plus 12 minus 23 minus negative 25 plus negative 6. Now do the next two. 4 plus 12. 16. Copy the rest. And keep going. 16 minus 23, negative 7, minus negative 25, plus negative 6. So here we get to a part that might be a little bit tricky. You see these two negative signs. Well, those two negative signs actually just make a plus sign. So you can turn that into one big plus sign. Anytime you see two negatives next to each other, they just make an addition sign. So this is really negative 7 plus 25, which is 18 plus negative 6. And 18 plus negative 6 is the same as just 18 minus 6, which is 12. You could also just type this into the calculator. So there you have one example of a simple math problem that you might encounter on the compass exam. The compass exam will test your algebra skills. Here is one example of a skill that you have to have for algebra, and that is taking the cube roots and square roots of numbers. We have to simplify the cube root of 125 minus the square root of 16. If you have a calculator, then you can find the cube root of 125 using your calculator, and you can find the square root of 16 using your calculator, because that's where you're going to have to start, is by simplifying each one of these before you subtract. If you don't have a calculator, though, it would be handy to know what the cube root is and what the square root is. And really what the cube root and square root is, is it's just asking you a question. So it's asking you what number times itself three times is 125. And that number would be 5 because 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. So the number times itself three times that would give you 125 would be 5. Thus, the cube root of 125 is 5. And the square root of 16 is asking you what number times itself is 16. And that number would be 4, since 4 times 4 is 16. So 4 is the number you would multiply times itself two times to get 16. So this is simply 5 minus 4, which is 1. So there you have one example of an algebra problem that you could encounter on the compass exam. You're going to need to know how to work percent problems for the compass exam. Here I have one example of a percent problem that you might see when you take the compass exam. Find 32 percent of 750. One way to think about this is um, 32% is really close to a third. 33 and a third percent would be exactly a third of 750. So just think about what a third of 750 is, which would be 250. And you see only one answer choice that's anywhere close to 250. But you can also do this uh, using simple arithmetic. This word of tells you to multiply. But we're not going to multiply 32 times 750, because we don't do calculations with percents. So you would first need to change 32% into a decimal. To change a percent into a decimal, just take the decimal in 32% and move it two places to the left. 
So it's 32 hundredths. Now you can multiply 32 hundredths times 750. And if you're using a calculator, you'll get 240. You can also multiply on paper. Either way, you get the answer 240, and that is 32% of 750. So there's one example of a percent problem you could see on the compass exam. The compass exam is full of word problems. Here I have one example of a type of word problem that you could encounter when you take the compass exam. A warehouse club member purchased flooring for $27.18 per box. The warehouse club reported that the member had saved over $250 by purchasing the flooring from them rather than from the local retailer who was selling it for $61.04 per box. What is the minimum number of boxes of flooring the member would have to purchase to save over $250? Now there are lots of different ways to solve this problem. I'm going to show you the algebraic way. Starting with, they would have spent $61.04 per box if they had bought it from the local retailer. So to write that, we have our $61.04 per tells you to multiply times the number of boxes. And since that's what we don't know, that's what they're asking us to find, what is the minimum number of boxes, that makes that our variable. So we'll just use x. $61.04 per box. This is what they would have spent if they had gone to their local retailer. So we're going to subtract from that what they actually did spend, which is the $27.18 per box, written similarly to the way we wrote this one, $27.18 per box, again, means times x. Now, we use the same variable because it's the same thing. They bought the same number of boxes, so that's why it's x and x, because this is the number of boxes they bought. So this is what they would have spent minus what they did spend, and what that gives us is how much they saved and it says they saved over $250. So what they saved is more than $250. Now we just need to solve this algebraic inequality. First by combining like terms by subtracting these two. So when we subtract $61.04 times x minus $27.18 times x, we get $33 and 86 cents times x is greater than $250. So what this tells us is how much they saved per box. So if we take how much they saved for each box, it will be greater than $250. To solve for x, all we need to do is divide both sides by $33.86. So x ends up being greater than 7 and 38 hundredths, and that is rounded to the nearest hundredths place. So they would need to buy more than 7 and 38 hundredths boxes, but they're not selling parts of boxes. They bought a full number of boxes, and if they only purchased 7 boxes, then they wouldn't be saving more than $250. If you multiply 38 or $33.86 times 7, you get something that's less than $250. So in order for them to save more than $250, they have to buy more than 7 and 38 hundredths boxes, which means they can't just purchase 7 boxes because 7 is not more than 7 and 38 hundredths. So 8 would be the minimum, and that is the key, the minimum number of boxes that they would have to purchase to save over $250. So there you have one example of a word problem that you might see when you take the compass test. The compass exam will test you on algebra. Here I have one example of an algebra problem that you could encounter on the compass exam. 
it says solve for x. 4 minus 3x is greater than 7. This is an inequality, and solving an inequality is very similar to solving an equation. There's only one trick to solving this inequality, and we'll get to that in just a moment. The first thing we need to do is subtract 4 from both sides, just like we would do if this were an equation. We now have negative 3x is greater than 3. Here's where the trick comes in. To solve for x, we have to divide both sides by a negative 3. With inequalities, any time you have to multiply or divide both sides of the inequality by a negative number, your sign has to flip. So it now says x is less than negative 1, which is answer A. There you have one example of an algebra problem that you could encounter on the compass exam.